In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts to help us answer the question, is 2024 eerily similar to the 2000 dot-com bust? Unfortunately, the bond market triggered a signal this week that was triggered in September of the year 2000. In addition to that study, we'll look at the labor report from Friday's session and ask how concerning we'll compare 2024 to the year 2000 and examine the big push higher in the VIX that occurred during Friday's session. This week's video is being recorded at approximately 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, August 2nd. At a disappointing monthly labor report, and as you can see on your screen, widespread weakness in the stock market. The charts on the lower portion of your screen are from Yardeni Research. And following Friday's NFP report, Yardeni Research noted that the BLS Household Employment Survey showed that 1.54 million workers were either not working or only part-time due to weather. This 1.54 million figure far above the historical average. They also noted that workers on temporary layoff jumped 14.8%, a two-year high. And in the report, permanent job losses actually declined for a third straight month. Thus, it wouldn't be shocking if next month's employment report did not look as poor. Similar take from Renaissance Macro Research, chart on your screen. Household survey, workers not at work due to bad weather. They note in the tweet that there's some evidence that payroll growth might be somewhat understated. And Yardeni kicked off their research note on August 2nd with this sentence. We hate to spoil the party for the diehard hardlanders, but we won't be joining them after today's July employment report. As noted by Dean Christians from Sentiment Trader, you can find Dean's Twitter handle here. We just experienced a rare shift in demand for treasury bonds. Something similar has only occurred nine times dating back to 1967. The 10th instance, July 31st, 2024. Right side of your screen, following the previous signals 12 months later, average gain in the S&P 500, 15.8%. 78% of the cases the market was higher. How about much maligned technology stocks? One year later, median return in the information technology sector, 26.5%. Tech was higher in 89% of these historical cases. There's really only one case that's concerning right here, September 18th of the year 2000, when there was a rapid shift in demand for U.S. Treasury bonds in this case, in the year 2000, the S&P 500 was down approximately 21% six months later and down over 30% a year later. So let's examine mid-September of the year 2000 to see what we can learn. Chart on your screen is the ratio of the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund relative to the Vanguard long-term treasury fund. The chart is dated one day after the signal. September 19th of the year 2000. You can see the ratio of stocks to bonds on September 19th was looking vulnerable. To daily chart, 20-day moving average in blue all the way out to the 250-day moving average in black. Thus, this signal, September 18th of the year 2000, very, very similar to what just happened just a few days ago, July 31st, 2024. And we know what this vulnerable look here on the S&P 500 Treasury bond ratio chart, the S&P 500 performed very poorly over the next 6 and 12 months. Thus, it would be concerning if this chart had a similar and vulnerable look in the present day. That is not what we have. On September 19th of the year 2000, the stock bond ratio last made a new high 8 months prior in January of the year 2000. On August 1st, 2024, the exact same ratio using the exact same mutual funds made a new high just three weeks ago. And the present day chart is back to levels that were seen roughly four and a half to five months ago. That's significantly different to mid-September of the year 2000. We could draw a horizontal line on the ratio and go back and hit price 15 months prior. This is a market that's much more concerned about the economy and much more concerned about the stock market relative to early August 2024. 
How about if we compare CCM model scores on September 18th of the year 2000? And walking forward from that period, if you know stock market history, the NASDAQ and tech stocks got hammered. Left side of your screen, secular volatility model scores as of the close on September 18th of the year 2000. Box to the right, trend strength scores. All time frames, long term time frame here. How do the exact same scores look during Friday's session? Better, worse, or about the same? The answer is significantly better. Trend strength scores 73 in 90 on September 18th of the year 2000. Much stronger, for the most part sitting at 99 and 100. And look how much more vulnerable down here on September 18th of the year 2000, the market was to a substantial drawdown. 18.03% relative to 0.45% in the present day. Data on the left side of your screen helps us assess probabilities. It doesn't predict anything. Data on the right side of your screen helps us assess probabilities, the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. The probability of bad things happening on September 18th of the year 2000 was much greater relative to the probability of bad things happening in early August of 2024. Chart on your screen is a daily chart of the VIX. It is dated August 2nd, 2024, 1.23 p.m. Eastern Time. Intraday, Friday's session, the VIX was up over 40%. That's concerning, but not necessarily a showstopper. Down here, we have the one-day rate of change in the VIX. And you can see here, it spiked even higher. This is in 2016, walking forward for the most part. The stock market did fine. Very similar situation here in 2017, anecdotally. Big spike in the VIX, similar to what we had intraday on Friday, August 2nd. Another big spike in the VIX. If you know your stock market history, calendar year 2017 had very limited drawdowns in terms of their magnitude, and the stock market did quite well. 2019, walking forward here, things eventually resolved to the upside. Similar situation here in 2021. Also related to the greed fear topic, tweet on the right side of your screen from Thursday evening, August 1st. The Goldman U.S. Panic Index is calculated as a rolling percentile of four equity volatility metrics. It spiked to one of the highest levels in two years in recent sessions. Here's a spike here, near a low in the S&P 500. Spike here, S&P 500 rallies. Spike here, S&P 500 rallies. Spike here, S&P 500 rallies. Similar spike this week. Simply telling us to keep an open mind about a wide range of outcomes. Tweet from August 2nd. Talks about data that's signaling a substantial easing in excess optimism. Let's go back to Dean's study. Had the signal on September 18th of the year 2000. If you've been watching these videos for years or a long time client, you may have heard the S&P 500 peaked in March of the year 2000. And it's often said in these videos, but the bear market really didn't start until September of 2000. Six months later, the S&P was down almost 21%. 12 months later, down over 30%. So if we look at this date, Left side of the screen, S&P 500 in isolation, September 19th, the day after that signal, the year 2000. You'll notice the S&P 500 was extremely volatile in the rear view mirror. That is indecisiveness. That is a market that is concerned about future economic and market outcomes. It's a one-year chart. If we look backwards one year during the session on Friday, August 2nd, you can see the present day chart no comparison in terms of volatility and indecisiveness. On this chart, the 20-day moving average down here is down near the 150-day here, and it's down near the 150-day again here. Here's the 20-day moving average during the trading session on Friday, August 2nd. Here's the 150-day moving average here. The white space between the moving averages, and this is the 20-day, this is the 250-day in black, it's indicative of a strong trend. So to say the stock market in the year 2000 looks very, very similar to the stock market in 2024, it's not really the case, especially from a volatility perspective. There are some similarities. So as always, we have to keep an open mind 
about a wide range of outcomes from wildly bullish to wildly bearish. But right now, the 20-day moving average on the S&P 500 has not even crossed below the red 50-day. With strong secular volatility model scores, we should still be focused on the right side of this image. We have to keep in mind it is not unusual for the market to pull back and to pull back significantly within the context of an uptrend and within the context of a secular bull market. As of Friday's close, the S&P 500 was down approximately 5.6% from its recent closing high. 100% normal and to be expected. And from a vulnerability perspective or an end of the trend perspective, we don't have anything on the anchored volume weighted average price chart of SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, intraday on August 2nd. That's particularly concerning. The present day rally started down here in late October of 2023. So for this trend to be in doubt, for the most part, you'd have to come all the way down to this red line here. Another logical reference point, the end of 2023 here, this is late December, this is early January. You can see those lines here come in and that's where we held earlier this year in April of 2024. So conceivably, the S&P 500 easily could come back to this level here around 509-ish and the uptrend at that point still wouldn't be in serious jeopardy. And at that point, if you came back to 509, you still wouldn't have exceeded this low down here, which is closer to 498 or call it 493-ish in here. So right now, this looks similar to this here. It's a corrective type phase. And we're not making any assumptions about whether these areas of possible support will actually act as support. Point of the exercise, we just don't have anything yet that's overly concerning relative to the current uptrend. How about XLK in isolation? Yes, we became extended up here, extended from the trend. During Friday's session on August 2nd, you can see we're coming back to a level where price held in April 2024, here and here. It also held similar area in January of 2024. So when XLK was down almost 3.5% during Friday's session, hasn't really done anything yet that's significantly different to what happened just a few short months ago in April of 2024. And we're back to a level where XLK made a stand in January of 2024. And you can see in April, we overshot those lines, had a close below it, and then came back and tested it. So as long as XLK can hang out or make a stand somewhere between here and here, let's say, it's not overly concerning. And if we just look at price, the last thing XLK did was make a new high here. It has not yet exceeded the April 2024 low. Tech versus small caps. This is where tech's outperformance began down here. We held here in the ratio, held here in the ratio, made a stand above it. We're testing that area. And in terms of the long-term trend, flipping in favor of small caps relative to tech, that may happen. But right now, the slope of all of these longer-term anchored volume weighted average price lines, they're all sloping upward, indicating a bias toward XLK from a longer term perspective and against IWM. You can see counter trend moves here came all the way back to the red line. Counter trend move here came all the way back to these lines. So even if, and we don't know that, if the XLK IWM uptrend remains intact, very, very possible like this period here, IWM could outperform XLK for several weeks or possibly even several months. But right now, the last thing the ratio did was make a high here and to make a significant lower low you would for the most part have to undercut this low here this is schg growth in isolation concerns would increase if we took out these two lines here this is late 2023 this is early 2024 you can see we had an overshoot earlier in the year so schg has reference points somewhere in the neighborhood of 89 dollars a share $86 a share, and then this cluster down here around 80. And you can see the red, light blue, and dark blue. That's where we held relative to the uptrend that started back in January of 2023. We made a stand in October of 2023. 
after this 100% normal and to be expected correction that began in July of 2023. So no question, SCHG vulnerable in the short term and the bears are in control relative to the short term trend, but they haven't wrestled away the long term trend yet. We'll see how it plays out. Very similar situation, SMH in isolation. Our performance begins down here in 2023. We make a stand here, make a stand here, make a stand here at the end of the correction in November of 2023. So this becomes a logical reference point. You can see price made a stand here, here, and here. We're back into that same general area with reference points somewhere in the neighborhood of 209, all the way down to 172-ish in terms of keeping the uptrend intact. That began in Q4 of 2022, early 2023. This is a vulnerable looking chart here. And as always, we're not going to make any assumption as to what happens next. Given the fact that price held here, here, and here, still doesn't look that bad intraday on Friday, August 2nd. This is SMH relative to the equal weight S&P 500. And intraday on Friday, August 2nd, this one's getting a little bit more concerning. You can see the slopes of the anchored volume weighted average price lines here flattening out. Kind of a rolling overlook in the short term. Overshooting is not unusual. The longer below this black line here, the more concerning it becomes because that's the line that's tied to the high here in Q4 of 2023. And these lines here are tied to the low in January of 2024. So if SMH is going to continue an uptrend relative to RSP, in a perfect world, we'd make a stand somewhere in this area here. Like the previous chart, it's telling us that we have to watch SMH more closely and it's possible we could trim some more SMH in coming sessions. The previous chart was SMH relative to RSP, the equal weight S&P 500. Now we're looking at SMH relative to small caps IWM. Intraday on Friday, August 2nd. A subtle little try to be patient look intraday on Friday. So the daily low here was higher than the daily low about two or three sessions ago. You can see the ratio made a stand in here several times. We're still above the rising purple line and the rising red line. It is concerning that the ratio is below the lines that are tied to this high in 2023 in January of 2024. So like the previous chart, this is telling us we have to be open to taking some additional profits in SMH in the coming sessions. We know it's not unusual to see overshoots, so we'll see what happens at the close today on Friday, August 2nd, and next week. These are the mark charts. The mark charts and indicators are proprietary tools from Market Studies LLC. Left side of your screen, SMH Weekly. Right side of your screen, XLK Weekly. Both have come back to the weekly TDST level. Think of that as a weekly bull bear demarcation line and it is an area that can act as potential support a little bit after lunchtime you can see we overshot it intraday and are trying to bounce back up similar situation over here weekly tdst level here You're also near this propulsion magnet in the form of this diamond triangle and this area too could act as potential support with the potential upside target in smh's case being approximately 44% higher than this level here intraday on Friday. In an XLK's case, the upside target hypothetically, roughly 30% higher from these levels down here seen during Friday's session. Not a forecast in any shape, form, or fashion. The point of showing it, this type of price action within the context of an uptrend, when it gets resolved, based on what we know today, typically you will go on to make a higher high and that's why you're trying to remain patient. Hypothetically, if you do nothing from point A to point B, eventually you will be rewarded with higher prices and higher profits, hypothetically, which is what happened in 2023. The stock market was weak. SMH here, roughly August 1st of last year. Normal correction, patience was rewarded with higher highs and higher profits. So on the weekly chart, we're near a try to be patient level, a logical try to be patient level for SMH and XLK. And if we look at a simple daily chart of SMH as of the close on Friday, August 2nd, 
we gapped down and came back to this gap area here from May. So, so far we've held the gap. One hypothetical scenario would be that you gap open on Monday and get an island reversal potentially. It's a lot of ifs right there. We'll see how it unfolds next week. Point of the exercise here, the intraday low on SMH occurred near a logical level. We came back to the gap. We can say the exact same thing for XLK. We had this massive gap up in May of this year. We came back to the gap intraday, went into the gap here, rallied and closed above it. Like SMH, you have the setup for the possibility of an island reversal. It is just that. It is just a setup. Nothing actionable on that yet. A couple of things that hypothetically would fall into the extremely concerning category. This chart of IWM that we've covered periodically in these videos for several months. If IWM pops into this area here, that would be very, very concerning. We're not there. We still have a very favorable setup on the chart of IWM in isolation. Once you get above this level here and consolidate, and as long as we maintain this level, from a probability perspective, it's basically telling us that the bear market here in 2022 is OVER. If we come back into this area here, then this may end up being a false breakout, but there's no reason, no evidence on this chart to support that. If anything, look at the slopes of the anchored volume weighted average price lines here, turning up, turning up, turning up. They're all trying to turn up and we're still above the anchored volume weighted average price lines tied to late 2023 here and early 2024 here. This is during the session, 2.43 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, August 2nd. Nothing alarming here. The same can be said for the equal weight S&P 500. From a long-term perspective, this is a very constructive breakout above these levels here from January of 2022. We weren't able to hold above the red line here, couldn't do it here. We've been above it since Q4 of 2023. Notice the slopes of the anchored volume weighted average price lines, turning up, turning up, turning up, turning up, turning up. Notice the slope here, January of 2022. Notice the slope here during the COVID crash. So nothing particularly alarming on the equal weight S&P 500 chart in isolation either. And we don't have anything on the equal weight S&P 500, meaning all sectors in the S&P 500 equally weighted relative to XLK, that tells us anything has changed yet. Right now, this looks like a counter trend move within the context of an existing downtrend against the other sectors equally weighted. And RSP, of course, includes XLK relative to XLK. Right now, this line here has acted as resistance, just as it did here, 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 and it's tied to this point here. And the longer term slopes here are indecisive, telling us to keep an open mind about a breakout in this direction. We'll see how it unfolds. We're still on schedule relative to this secular volatility research, and it is possible, with a strong emphasis on the word possible, that we'll be opening back up a new client window sometime in the next one to two weeks. Hopefully the markets will calm down a little bit, and we can talk about this topic in more detail in next week's video. Thus, it's very possible that the NFP report on Friday, August 2nd, the monthly labor report, it's possible that it was impacted by some short-term factors. We'll find that out next month. The chart of the S&P 500 relative to Treasury bonds in the present day in early August 2024 it really doesn't look anything like the peaking process as the dot-com bubble was bursting in the year 2000. And keep in mind that the scores on your screen come from 136 different charts where we answer 489 questions. And those scores tell us that objectively, the present day, the trends in the present day, and a strong trend speaks to the conviction about future economic and market outcomes. Present day trend is much stronger than the trend objectively on September 18th of the year 2000. And if that's the case, then we can probably focus on the scenarios where the S&P 500 was higher almost 16% a year later, 30%, almost 38%, 12%, 22%, 14%, 15%, 
flattish and up 24 relative to that very scary dot-com bursting case, September 18th of the year 2000, where stocks got drilled. And the VIX being up as much as 40% intraday doesn't really tell us a whole lot that can occur when bad things are about to happen, and that can occur within the context of a very strong and existing uptrend as it did here in Q1 of 2021. And the S&P 500's chart in the present day really doesn't look anything like September 19th of the year 2000. And on Friday, August 2nd, we really don't have anything on the anchored volume weighted average price chart of SPY that's particularly alarming or that says this action in here is anything other than a 100% normal and to be expected correction that occurs even within the context of the strongest uptrends. And one of the reasons why we looked at September 18th of the year 2000 so hard during Friday's session is because we want to make sure that we don't get stuck on a story. And we want to continue to make our decisions based on the facts, the facts in hand. And currently, the facts that we've just reviewed tell us to try to be patient heading into next week's session. And we all know, if we're going to use all of this effectively, it's important that we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.